Hello, my name is Chris Dale, and in this video series, I got over the wire war games. So I was wanna, wanted to uh, introduce over the wire war games. They are made by a guy called Steven Actor, a couple other dudes. Uh, they have a superb project going on where they are basically providing an infrastructure where we can practice hacking. Awesome, practice hacking. And the war game I want to go through today is a war game called Natus. Natus is an awesome war game that prevents you from being stuck for too long. By that I mean it has solutions, it has the source code, so you can actually know where you want to fumble around and find vulnerabilities. So, so I'm going to go through all of these levels, so all, all the way down to level uh, 32, 33 here. Um, one level per episode I was thinking. And I'll try to explain what the levels are all about, how to solve them, what the key takeaways are. And I'm sure there are key takeaways that you probably would not believe that there was in many of these levels. So first thing off, we're going to start with level zero. Of course, it's going to be a peanuts to solve. You can find the password for the next level on this page. So it's somewhere on this page. It's not rendered invisible. For example, white on white background. Uh, if we try to right click, we go inspect element. We could go to the source. Uh, we could alternatively click control U, bring up the source, and it says, Password for Natus 1 is and a SHA-1 or MD5 some, something. So there is many ways of solving this. I mean, we can look in our proxies. Currently, my Firefox setup is sending every single request through a local proxy called Burpsuit. So I press Control F5 to cache, redo my request. I tell Burpsuit to capture server responses as well. I forward this request, and in the response, we can see that, hey, the password is actually just an HTML comments. So it's right there in the source. Now, why is, is this even applicable for real life? Is, is this something that you would see in real life at all? It might seem too stupid to be real, right? Uh, well, it is really stupid. Unfortunately, though, it is real. Not even, not only from the old days, like when we had vulnerabilities uh, like this uh, here and there, but we are seeing similar vulnerabilities like this today. Uh, first of all, I just want to mention, I did find a password hard-coded in JavaScript not long ago, but what we're seeing with this type of vulnerability, uh, security by obscurity, is we're seeing it in mobile applications. Yes, we're seeing it in client-side applications, where developers do not think that when I send someone's source over to someone's computer or someone's computer system, they now own the source. They can debug, they can reverse engineer, they can find this juicy info. And a couple of times I have seen developers hard coding credentials, uh, authentication keys and more inside of HTML and inside of applications. So obviously that is quite bad. So I believe this should be able to take us to uh, NADAS uh, 1. So let's see, over the wire.org. Of course, it's an unknown host. Let me see if we can do it like this. Enter and change numbers. Unauthorize. Press F5. All right, so it's asking for authentication. Let us know. Copy the password. Control C. Did copy an extra space there, so let's be sure we get, remove that. And we're on the next level. So. I think that is it for one episode per movie. I'm going to make 32, 33 out of these episodes, and I'm going to explain step by step what makes these vulnerabilities tick, what makes them work, how to exploit them, and so on. So hopefully it will be interesting. Of course, now in the beginning it will be uh, pretty dull and pretty lame for most people, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get some insights and what actually is going on here. All right, cool. So see you next time.